Like I said in the introduction, learning copper plate is like learning to ride a bike or any other skill. It's going to need a lot of practice. And I'd like to help you improve by telling you how to train your eye to look for the most common mistakes. The five criteria that we're going to look at are form, size, slant, spacing and weight. Let's start at the beginning with the downstroke. Remember that it's supposed to be squared off at the top and the bottom. So sometimes when it when you don't add pressure equally, it looks the top is a little smaller and the bottom is a little smaller when it should be place, press, pull, even weight down and squared off tops and bottoms. The in-strokes, it's uh, difficult sometimes to curve it. You don't want it to straight. You don't want to curve it the wrong way. You want to curve it in a kind of under swoop from the baseline to the waistline. The overturn arch, we want to make sure that both legs follow the 55 degree slant and an underturn arch, the same thing. And also remember to release pressure before the curve or after the curve if it's an overturn. In these compound curves, we want to make sure that the most weight, the largest part of the heaviest part of the downstroke is in the center. We don't want them to kind of sway. We want those lines to be, those legs to be quite straight and the curves to be nice and round. The oval of course, again with that Goldilocks thing, you don't want them to be too round or too skinny. And it's going to take some practice to get that shape perfectly and get to get the lines to meet with your in-stroke and your upstroke even uh, evenly so that they look nice. When you're checking your copper plate writing for size, the most important thing is the ratio of ascender and descender to X height. Remember, we want that to be 1.5 to 1 to 1.5. So if you shorten the ascenders or descenders, there may be some ambiguities, like with H and N start looking alike, or Ds and As start looking alike, and uh, especially if you're writing them a lot shorter. And if you're writing them taller, remember that the grace and flow of copper plate contrast thicks and thins is limited by the flexibility of your nib. If you write too tall, the lines may look too thin in comparison. This slant, I've mentioned the 55 degree angle, I don't know how many times, so we have to make sure that we follow it. This word I'm writing here, even. If it's not even, then it's going to mess with our form. It's going to mess with the spacing. Uh, again, it might be interesting if you want to add emphasis to one particular word, but that won't be copper plate then. Using guides, by the way, is not cheating. Using guidelines is absolutely necessary and every calligrapher does it. You have to use the guides and unless, you know, you may be 20 years into practice and know the, the slant off by heart. Spacing is one of those things that can ruin a piece. If you don't have equal width and equal distance inside the letters and between the letters, it will look off. And a way to practice spacing is doing what we call a necklace. A necklace is where you choose one letter and you write it in combination with all the other letters. So here I'm giving you the first few letters of an example of an A necklace. So I'm combining the letter A with all the other letters, with the B, with the C, with the D, with the E, etc. You can do this for any. You can do this for an M, you can do it for an O. Uh, necklaces help you figure out spacing. And weight, of course, how much ink we lay down. So we do want the contrast between thick and thin, but we want to make sure that the pressure, the amount of pressure that we exert on the tines to get those thicks is even throughout the words. 
Otherwise, you get an example like this one that I'm writing right now, where the downstroke of the G is much heavier than the downstroke of that first O or the downstroke of that D, for example. Remember that the, the beauty in calligraphy is all about consistency and parallel forms and um, the, the letters having relationships to one another. So waiting, if your, your waiting isn't consistent, that can mess with the look of the final word. If your spacing and form aren't consistent, that can mess with the look of your of your piece. So always try and have a look for form, size, slant, spacing, and weight. <laughs>